The CBC's Radio Canada International Towers can be seen throughout the small town of Sackville, New Brunswick. And of course, also by the highway, you'll find McDonald's, Esso, the Co-op, and New Brunswick Liquor. And no Canadian town is complete without Tim Hortons. And a left turn from the highway, and a little bit off the beaten path, you'll find Patterson's Family Restaurant, Pizza Delight, Sackville's Tourist Information Center, not often used by students, and of course, Home Hardware. And of course, since this is New Brunswick, there's an Irving, inside which you'll find a Circle K, which is expanding its hours and will soon be the only thing open 24 hours a day in Sackville. Looking over at the sign for Sackville Center, if you haven't already, you'll probably notice that Sackville is pretty small. A five minute walk down from the highway brings you to Tantramar Veterans Memorial Civic Center, which houses an ice rink used by Mount Allison's women's varsity hockey team. Walk a few minutes further down from the Civic Center and you'll come to the East Main Plaza. There, you'll come across Sassy's Convenience Store and Pub for all your late night snacking and drinking needs. Behind Sassy's, you'll find Vin's Walk, which serves Vietnamese, Chinese, Thai, and Canadian food. So if you're ever in the mood for hot dogs and stir fry, you know where to go. Right next to that, you'll find Service New Brunswick and Service Canada. And as well, you'll find Jack's Pizza and Subs, which actually isn't too bad. During complete 180 from the East Main Plaza, you'll turn around and see that campus is just ahead of you. Before we continue to the academic buildings, however, I want to point out the heating plant to your left and to the left of that north side quad where we will be ending our tour and to the left of that one of the entrances to Sackville's Waterfowl Park. Continuing on, let's get to the core of campus and get our bearings. There's one directory on campus, but I'd really recommend looking at the school's new virtual tour to get your bearings before you get here. We are here, just at the corner of Main and Salem Street. Our first building on our stop is going to be the building just across that, the old University Center, which is now mostly referred to just as Windsor Theatre. You'll notice there are two fairly distinct sections of the building. The original Memorial Library, finished in 1927, and the Annex, finished in 1960. In the front of the building, you'll notice the label of University Center, which has been up since 1970, and you'll also notice that it's spring and snow is melting off the roof. The building now only houses Windsor Theatre, which is located just upstairs to the left. First, let's go and see downstairs, where the Students Administrative Council used to be located along with all of its services. Unfortunately, the doors are locked and all of the mailboxes which used to be located there have been moved to the new Student Center. The old Student Center used to be home to Manhausen's Cafe, the Golden A. However, all the equipment has since been moved to Gracie's in the new student center. Moving on from the addition to the original part of the old memorial library, just down this hallway, the multicultural lounge has since been moved to the second floor of the student center. Now let's look upstairs and see what there is. You'll first notice a sign for memorial library and a plaque for memorial hall honoring those who serve for their country, the original purpose of the building. This is the entryway to Memorial Hall, which to my knowledge has been closed since 2008. Walking downstairs, you'll see the original front door to the Memorial Library, and the old Tantramar pub. The building is now only used for Windsor Theatre, which puts on about 10 plays a year. Let's just go inside and see Windsor Theatre.
Many who are opposed to the university's decision to tear down this building have cited its use as a memorial to honor those who died in World War I, in addition to its artistic and architectural merit. However, the school has responded by saying it has moved the memorial flags to the new student center. In addition, the school administration has promised to use aspects of the old memorial library in the new Fine and Performing Arts Center. Continuing onwards, we'll see Bennett Building, which houses the University's Computing Services Center. Walking up the street a bit beyond that, you'll find Centennial Hall. Centennial Hall, which was built in 1883, now houses the University's Alumni Relations Office, University Advancement, and Communications and Marketing Office. Close to Centennial Hall, you'll find Mount Austin University's Chapel, which was built in 1964. Past the chapel, you'll find Mount Allison Science Buildings, Flemington, and Barclay. Moving past the science buildings, you'll see Hart Hall, which is home to the English, Philosophy, Canadian Studies, Classics, History, and Religious Studies departments. Moving beyond Hart Hall, you'll see Crabtree and the library. In between the library and Crabtree, you can see a building, Convocation Hall, in the distance. Just beyond the library, you can look at Convocation Hall and turn left to see the music conservatory. Convocation Hall, you can turn leading to This is Joe. Street. You can see the of Street. Uncle Lynn, the three. the post and the dollar store. field
Liquid. This 